Hello, I'm Jesse Grimes of OneHeartFire.org and EarthCare Design. I'd like to show you today how you can transform your water-hungry lawn into a water harvesting and resilient veggie garden for you and your family. Uh, this particular garden is located in a typical suburban home near uh, Bend, Oregon in a high desert climate that receives about six inches of rain every year. Now, even in the desert, it's possible to create a garden that requires little or no irrigation by applying the techniques and decision-making tools of permaculture. Let me show you what I mean. One of the principles of permaculture design is to capture and store flows whenever possible. A flow could be something like sunlight, which we would capture with solar panels and store in batteries, or wind energy, which we would harvest with a with windmill. It could also even mean something like the busy traffic going down your street, which you could harvest a bit of income from with a roadside fruit stand. Now, one of the most important applications of this principle when it comes to gardening is to capture and store rainwater as much as possible. Fortunately, on a suburban lot like this, the water harvesting system is already built in. Just this one downspout leading from this section of roof can capture 500 gallons of water for every inch of rain. We would have to have quite a lot of 50 gallon rain barrels to collect all that. So instead of storing all this precious water above ground, it's best to store it beneath the ground where the plants can reach it directly. So how do we do that? By taking advantage of gravity and the natural patterns of water. This path right here is the main water harvesting feature of this garden. It sits below the level of the rest of the lawn and has been flattened to be completely flat and level across the entire length. So now that when water comes rushing out of this downspout, it'll slowly and evenly spread along the entire path. Now that the water has been slowed down and contained, it'll have time to soak into the surrounding soil instead of washing over the lawn and out into the street. Now there's also something very special about these beds. Underneath all this soil, we have buried a bunch of logs and tree branches, as well as all of the sod that we ripped up from this whole garden area. And this sounds like a funny thing to do, but it has an important purpose. As the sod breaks down underground and decomposes, all of the organic matter and fertility that was once in the lawn will become rich humus soil for the veggie garden. As the wood breaks down and decomposes, it will slowly release nutrients and fertilizer. It will also become like a big sponge to soak up all of that water that we've collected in the path, holding on to it and storing it throughout the dry season. This way, the vegetables can thrive much further into the summer months without added irrigation, possibly without any irrigation at all. This technique aligns with the permaculture principle of valuing renewable resources and recycling waste streams. Instead of going out and buying fertilizer, even organic fertilizer, which requires a tremendous amount of energy to produce and transport to the garden store, we have collected and used a waste stream of unwanted trees, turning them into long-term fertility and resilience in the garden. These stones lighting the beds are also a recycled waste stream, collected locally from the land of someone who didn't want them anymore and might have otherwise had them hauled off and dumped, wasting a lot of energy. The rock walls also demonstrate some other permaculture principles, including the first one I talked about, capturing and storing energy. As the sun shines, it will heat up these stones, and after nightfall, the stones will hold on to that heat slowly releasing it into the soil and raising the temperature slightly in the garden. In the morning, when the stones have cooled, it will absorb the heat of the rising sun, moderating the sharp temperature changes that damage the garden plants. The temperature moderating effect of these walls will provide a less stressful microclimate for the vegetable garden, meaning better production. Finally, you'll probably notice that the shape of these gardens is quite curved and irregular, unlike the traditional rectangular boxes of a raised garden. This is an application of the permaculture principle of maximizing and taking advantage of edge. In nature, the most abundant places are the edges, the areas where two or more different elements interact, such as the edge between water and land in a pond, or the edge between forest and meadow. In fact, this is why roadsides are often much more lush and abundant than the forest or field beyond. It is this edge effect. The more curves we put into our design, the more edge we get, and this will result in more abundance. It is simple techniques and ways of thinking like this that make a garden designed with permaculture different from a traditional garden, as well as much more abundant and resilient. The few things I've talked about in this video are only the tip of the iceberg. There are many more principles to be considered, and permaculture design can be applied far beyond the scope of a simple vegetable garden. If you would like to dive deeper into the world of permaculture, you can visit oneheartfire.org, where I have assembled a number of resources to get you started. If you're interested in consultation, design help, or having a garden like this installed in your own home, 
please contact me through my website at earthcaredesign.com. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.